Welcome everybody to our presentation today on the San Antonio, Texas market. My name is Scott Pastel, VP of Marketing for Marshall Reddick, and I am joined today by Christina Dorier, our realtor and advisor in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, so I'm here now in, in uh, California uh, talking to you folks from our headquarters in Newport Beach. And we've got Christina on the phone in our office in San Antonio. And I appreciate everybody joining us today to learn about this very exciting, very attractive uh, real estate market. Um, for those of you that have been with us for a while, you've probably seen San Antonio uh, mentioned many, many times. It's actually been a market that Marsh Reddick Real Estate has had boots in the ground for over a decade. Um, what's so exciting about today's presentation is that we now have a office in San Antonio, Texas, um, where Marshall Reddick Real Estate does sales and property management in-house. So um, everything is under one roof. And um, if you've worked with Marsh Reddick in the past, then you can expect to have the same service that you've had working with our advisors and um, having a very consistent uh, experience uh, purchasing in the San Antonio market. So what we're gonna do during this presentation is start off with a little bit of real estate investing tips and and uh, you know we always like to start off with a little bit of education uh, and those of you that have joined our webinars know i really like to start off with some information and um, real estate investing 101 tips and then we will get into the nitty-gritty statistics and data of san antonio texas we'll be talking about the job market and major employers and uh, population growth and really what makes this market so ideal for real estate investing. We've got a lot of numbers and data to present to you. And towards the end, we'll even be able to go through a few hand-picked properties that Christina found just really over the last day or two. Um, since inventory moved so quickly, uh, Christina has been watching the market and hand-selecting properties that we feel would make a great pick. And we've got a variety of single-family and multifamily properties to go over with you. We'll be talking about our property management in San Antonio, which is really the, uh, the X factor that makes all this possible. No matter where you live, no matter where you're calling from, um, you know, you're able to take advantage and leverage our, our local property management team of leasing agents and contractors and handymen that are all servicing our properties in San Antonio. We'll also touch a little bit on financing as well. So we've got a lot of stuff to go through and uh, very excited to have you on the presentation. Those of you that are new to Marsh Reddick Real Estate, I just want to mention briefly what Marsh Reddick Real Estate is. We are a full service, one stop shop for real estate, residential real estate specifically. And um, if you've been on our website, which I highly encourage you to do on MarshallReddick.com, you'll notice that we have 16 different markets across the country. Um, so, what is Marshall Reddick? We are real estate brokers, private money lenders, and property managers. So we, we provide the full scope of service professionals all under one roof to make the process simple and streamlined, really no matter what your goals are in real estate. And um, you'll notice at the bottom of the slide there, even outside of uh, real estate sales, management, and lending, uh, we provide the uh, referrals for the best CPAs, insurance agents, um, contractors, anything that you're looking for in real estate, you can find here at Marshall Reddick. So our agenda for tonight, um, we've already gone through, you know, just the uh, basic overview of Marshall Reddick real estate. We're going to be going through a lot of up-to-date statistics and data on the San Antonio market. I'll be talking about why we Marshall Reddick has chosen San Antonio as our very first um, outside of California market to set up an office and a team in. We'll be talking about financing and we'll be going over some hand selected investment properties as well. And so when it, when it comes to uh, choosing where to invest, Christina, can you hit the next slide a few times? And just keep going. So when it comes to uh, where to invest, 
uh, there's, there's different criteria that we look at and evaluate for which markets are absolutely ideal for real estate investing. So when it comes down to it, the job market is the very first thing that we look at. So not only do we look for a decrease over time in unemployment, um, but we look at the job growth rate, the business friendly climate on whether that market is, is hiring major employers. And all of these things really add a lot more demand for housing. San Antonio, Texas is one of the fastest growing cities in the country with already a population of over a million and a half in the city of San Antonio and two and a half million in the greater metropolitan. They're still seeing a tremendous um, population growth. And part of that is that San Antonio holds four major military bases, which Christina is going to go over in detail, not just one, but four. So it's a major, major, major um, capital of military for our country. The job market has a very big impact on vacancy rates. And as investors, we want to limit the vacancy rate as much as possible. Um, so having a property rented, re-renting a property, attracting renters, uh, the size of the rental pool are all very, very favorable in San Antonio. We also look at economic diversity. So we want to be in markets that don't have just you know one or two major job markets, but a whole diversity of employers. And in San Antonio, you can find everything from uh, military to government, education, healthcare. And Christina will talk about um, the medical centers in San Antonio and how it's such a huge uh, destination for the medical industry as well. So we want to make sure that there's a variety of employment because real estate investing is a long-term investment. And when we buy a rental property, we may hold that property for 10, 15, 20 years or longer. So it's very important that um, as the economy changes, we want to make sure that we are investing in, in you know, sort of recession-proof markets, areas that have so many sectors of employment that no matter what happens in one industry, the outlook is strong enough to continue hiring and to continue providing the demand for housing that San Antonio has seen over decades. As investors, you know, we want the most bang for our buck. So number four is housing affordability. The median home price in San Antonio, Texas right now is a little over $200,000 per home. And that's lower than the national average of about 270,000. So not only is the median home price in San Antonio lower than the national average, um, but I'm venturing to say that it's significantly lower than most of us, than where most of us live. And that's what attracts us to San Antonio is that we can buy a fourplex for four or $500,000, which really is a, is a fraction of what we may find. It's certainly in places like California where, um, where our office is located. And what that does is it gives us a much higher rent to price ratio, meaning that the monthly rent is much closer to the purchase price than the uh, higher price markets like LA and San Francisco and New York City, um, where in San Antonio, we can get significantly higher income for much lower purchase price, which provides an opportunity for, for positive cash flow. And then lastly, is, is that market landlord friendly or tenant friendly? And Texas as a state is a very, very landlord, pro-landlord state. So all the laws in terms of rent increases and evictions and um, enforcing late rents are very, very favored towards the landlord, where, for example, here in California, all the laws are heavily favored towards the tenant. So these are some of the uh, the factors that we look at, which is why San Antonio is, is, is one of our top markets. Education, and then there's one more, which is also reliable property management. Um, Christina will go over some of the colleges and universities in San Antonio that attract students who enter the workforce after graduation. The colleges and universities um, have a major impact on the job market um, and uh, the attraction of talent from not just local, but also out of state. And then of course, having reliable property management allows you to purchase properties way outside of your backyard, uh, knowing that your investments are in good hands.
So this is a slide of all the markets Marshall Reddick is located in. And if you recognize these cities, it's because they're all major metropolitan markets. Many of them are state capitals. And the ones that have a red line around them represent locations that Marshall Reddick has a brick and mortar office located in. So in each of these markets that are in a red box, that means Marshall Reddick is the broker the, and the property manager of those properties. Now, outside of those markets, uh, we work with third party brokers and property managers that we've designated as our representatives. And um, what's nice about the markets like Austin and San Antonio is everything is all under one roof, very streamlined process. You're working with the same team from start to finish. Many of you have probably read our Reddick property rating ebook by now, but if you haven't, I highly encourage you to go on marshreddick.com, click on the invest tab at the very top, and then click properties, and then you'll see this gray box on the right um, that says Reddick property rating ebook. This is a 40 page ebook that you can probably read in an hour or two at the most that is chock full of data and information on how to select the best real estate investments that fit your unique criteria. You'll see on all the properties is a property rating, A, B, or C. And we like to have each of our clients read that ebook so that they can understand exactly what property classes fit them. And property classes are gonna impact how much vacancy a property might have, how much maintenance it's gonna have, uh, whether you're expected to have more appreciation or cash flow how much appreciation you can expect on that property. So the property class is going to tell you, and it's going to reveal a lot about that property's performance. And on the next slide, I'll, I'll share with you just a little bit of information on what you can find in this ebook. So if you're not really familiar with property classes yet, um, you can see that this is just one little piece of the ebook is our Reddick property scale, which essentially encompasses every property in every market of the country. No matter where you are, no matter what type of property you have, that property is going to either be luxury, A, B, C, or D. And the determination of property class is based on the median home price in that respective metropolitan market. So as I mentioned, the median home price in San Antonio right now, is about 220,000 or so. And so, the median home price is anything about 80% to 100% of the median is a B-class property. Any, any property that's 50% to 80% of the median is a C-class property. Any property that's worth less than half of the median is a D-class property. And then moving back over to A-class, any property above the median up to 1.3 times the median is an A-class property, and any property worth more than 1.3 times the median is luxury class. If I went through that a little too fast, don't worry, we're recording this, but you can also get all this information in the ebook. Now, the questions above that scale are questions that you should be asking and questions that advisors and, and realtors like Christina can go over with you more on the phone to help you determine which properties make sense. And so much like a financial advisor, these are questions to help you determine what outcome are you looking for to accomplish in real estate? Are you looking for the most cash flow possible? Are you looking for the most appreciation possible? Are you looking for a combination of both? And every metropolitan market has A to Z. So you can find luxury A, B, C, and D class properties in San Antonio, just like any other market in the country. But of course, these properties are going to be in much different locations of the market. So we'll be talking more about property classes as we get to the properties later, but I do want you to download that ebook and spend time reading it. It is purely educational, very, very informative. So that brings me to the exciting part of the presentation, introducing you to Christina Dorier. Um, Christina is a licensed Texas realtor. She's worked with about 100, 150 Marshall Reddit clients so far. Um, and is probably one of the hardest working realtors I have ever met personally. Um, I'm here in California and she's two hours ahead in Texas. And there's a lot of times where I'll talk to her 
so late at night that I'm ready to go to bed and uh, you know, she's two hours ahead. So she not only works hard, but absolutely loves what she does. And um, the second part on here, not only is she a realtor, she's also an investor. And even better than that, she's a client of our property management. So we manage one of her properties in San Antonio. So she experiences firsthand our property management as a client while helping our clients purchase property in San Antonio. So that's a, a huge testimony to Christina's passion in real estate on uh, not just helping people buy real estate, but also help uh, building her own portfolio as well. Um, Christina has a very, very long background in mortgages, so she's very familiar with investment financing. She's a market specialist, so not only is she familiar with San Antonio, she's also familiar with our markets outside of San Antonio as well. Um, and as she'll tell you, happily married with uh, an adorable little two-year-old boy, and I believe an 11-year-old girl, if I got that right. I, I'm losing track yeah. now. Um, but I'd like to introduce you all to Christina. Christina, are you there? Yes, I sure am, Scott. Thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. You're awesome. But, but yeah, that, that's correct. I have, I've been in the real estate business since 1999. I, I was a loan officer for over 15 years. I um, know the market very well in San Antonio. I lived in San Antonio all my life. And after being a loan officer, um, I decided to uh, become a realtor, still in the same, you know, real estate business, but I had, you know, I, I had such passion in it and I, I definitely wanted to, you know, help people, um, you know, find their investment property or, you know, primary property. Uh, and I, again, I know the market very well and um, I'm just really excited, you know, to be here tonight and to present some properties to you. So. Let me go on to the next right. slide. Yeah, so um, in, we have an office that I run in San Antonio. We, I, you know, we have everything in one roof. So we handle the sales, which is what I do. Uh, so from the time where you're looking and I can help you find out what your criteria is, all in the beginning to help uh, introduce you to a great lender, um, get you pre-approved, uh, find you good property, uh, whether you're looking for one property or several. And once you go under contract, I help you every step of the way. So whether it's your very first time doing it or you're seasoned at it, I help you every step of the way to negotiating repairs when you get your inspection to uh, closing and then after closing, uh, the accountability is there because it's still the same team. I'll still be working with you alongside with my property manager uh, who will help, you know, get, you know, get the property ready for, you know, to get it rented out. And then we have leasing agents in our office that will help show your property, you know, to get, you know, to, to people, potential tenants that call in because we have it marketed and then to qualifying uh, that applicant because we don't cut corners. We, we check everything. We pull their, their criminal background. We run a credit report, check their, uh, rental history, contact their landlord, making sure they're not breaking a lease. We pull an eviction report. We call their employer, make sure they're still working. <laughs> so we check out everything. And then once we qualify them, then of course we let you know. And so we definitely, it's all one stop shop, all in one. Um, so it's not like you're just left after the sell and you have to find your own property manager and everything. It's all done in the same house, in the same roof. And then, um, so we have the full service real estate and property management team. Um, we specialize in single family homes as well as multifamily. So I'm going to present a duplex and a fourplex as well as single family homes, but I'm always constantly checking the market to see what good properties are popping up. They don't usually last that long, especially multifamily. So I'm always updating the website. Um, you know, so keep an eye out on the website. Um, every week I'm adding new properties, new properties. Um, that I hand select myself that I know that is going to be a good property for you in the long run that's going to appreciate over time that's going to be in a good area that's going to grow um, and continue to grow and get you some good rents that are going to actually increase usually every year increasing the rent uh, which happens in good expanding areas um, and of course our program is 100% turnkey one-stop shop so it's really, it's a really great process to go through. 
Um, here's a map of the San Antonio, the greater San Antonio area. San Antonio is a really big city. So it includes a bunch of suburbs located in the middle on the outside of San Antonio throughout that you might hear, such as Leon Valley, Holotus, Live Oak, Converse. There's a lot of different suburbs. So that whole map right there includes that, like all that area. And um, there's a lot going on in that map, but we have uh, major highways, which is Loop 410 that you'll see in the middle of that. We have I-10 that cuts through the city. I-10 also takes us to California. <laughs> And then we have Highway 35, which is a major highway that cuts to the northeast side of San Antonio. Um, 1604 is a big loop that circles all, all the way around San Antonio. Um, the closer you get towards downtown, which is located in the middle of the map, you're going to get lower priced homes. The higher priced homes are going to be in the north, northwest side, which is going uh, where you see Holotus and I-10 and 1604 area. That's a very pricey area. Anywhere outside that 1604 loop is going to be price, uh, higher priced homes. The majority of, of where we manage properties are going to be between Highway 410 and 1604 and um, the northwest all the way to the northeast side. That's where you're going to find a lot of affordable homes, but in good areas. I like to keep, you know, people in good areas. I, you know, so I know the right areas to stay within because you might be looking at a property, it might look good on numbers, but I, I can tell you it may look good on numbers, but you need to have a local expert that knows the, the area very well that's going to keep you in a good area, you know, that your investment property is going to be in a good area. So this, this shows all these different parts of San Antonio uh, places, you know, that are very popular around the city. USAA, uh, that's a, a huge employer in, in San Antonio. Um, it's a military insurance company, but they also have uh, different um, areas such as mortgages, uh, life insurance, but it's a huge company and they employ over 22,000 em employees. They, they're really big, but they ran out of space with their um, offices and a lot of their employees work from home. So they, they have a lot of employees in San Antonio that work from home, and we have a lot of tenants that work at USAA. And then you have SeaWorld, which is located on the, the west side, the, the yeah, far west side of San Antonio. Um, and I, I call it the SeaWorld area because that whole area has been growing so fast this past five years. We do sell a lot of property out there. It's a great market to be in the SeaWorld area because you're really close to the military base. There's Lackland Air Force Base, um, and so we get a lot of military uh, tenants out there that are looking, as well as just uh, a lot of businesses out there. Um, and then, of course, we have on the right side, uh, you'll see Randolph Brooks, Fort Sam Houston. Those are two Air Force bases right there. The left side, Lackland and Kelly Air Force Base. So we have four Air Force bases. And then, uh, of course, we have a bunch of different um, universities and colleges. So UTSA is our major one. That's the University of Texas at San Antonio located on the northwest side. We get a lot of, uh, you know, uh, you know, professors or just people that work there that, um, you know, are looking to rent and they're not ready to buy yet. And then we got a lot of new graduates, a lot of uh, people that are may have graduated but are in um, you know, uh, upper grad school or, or going for their uh, master's that are, you know, tenants, you know, but they're working. Um, so, you know, that's just a, a lot of different colleges. We have San Antonio College, Trinity University, St. Mary's University, which is a huge university for uh, lawyers uh, to get their law degree. So it's a really good market to be in, in San Antonio. That just gives you a little photo of our downtown Riverwalk. It's very beautiful downtown. Um, there's a lot of lot of different types of food, music. It's fun to hang out. Uh, we have, of course, the Alamo. Uh, we have our lovely spurs. <laughs> uh, we love our spurs. We're real big with that. Um, we have the what we call the Hill Country, which is you know kind of close to where I live, where you start driving out away from the city it's not the country out in, it's not out in the country but it's out it's right next to the city but it's where you start seeing the hills 
you start seeing um, people buying land and building out there. It's beautiful views. So we get a lot of wildflowers and blue bonnets. It's real pretty. So that picture on the top right shows a lot of blue bonnets that happens in the springtime. Um, and we're known for the medical facilities. We have a huge medical center that's located in the northwest side of San Antonio. And that, that area is just such a high demand rental market. Even older homes that were built in the 50s and 60s, even those that were not not even renovated are renting for good rental prices just because it's located in the medical center. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll go over a fourplex that's located there. And this is just going to give you an idea of the past years of the population of just the city of San Antonio by itself. This is not including all the suburbs and out, you know, surrounding areas. This is just the San Antonio population from back in 2000. It was at 1.144 million. At 2010, uh, 1.29, and then 2017, uh, right under uh, 1.5 million. Uh, but now, at 2018, it's at if you include all the surrounding areas, it's at two. It's pretty close to 2.5 million. So we got a lot of people, and it's a big. It is a big area, a big city with a lot of people, a lot, and with a, you know a lot of good jobs. Our unemployment rate is very low. It's it's actually lower than 3.8% right now. It's closer to 3.4%, which is very healthy because there, most people don't have problems finding jobs in San Antonio. There's just so many different kinds of jobs to choose from, whether it's the uh, hotel or restaurant industry. We got tons of hotels, lots of restaurants. We got lots of tenants that are, uh, you know, uh, managers of restaurants or run hotels like, you know, um, uh, assistant managers and stuff like that, or, you know, just working in the hotels, lots of tenants. So not just the hotels and restaurants, but then of course we have all the banking, financial um, industries here in San Antonio. We've got a lot of corporations that are here. Um, it's just such a healthy economy. And then this gives you an idea of the cost of living uh, a lot of people are moving to San Antonio for the fact that you can have a very good um, lifestyle and, I mean, just living off of 50000 a year income, you know, um, getting a nice place for 1200 a month, living very comfortably, um, you know, our, our, ta our taxes um, are a little high for the property. It's like about an average of 2.2%. However, the values of our homes are a lot more affordable. Um, and our groceries are a lot cheaper than some other areas. Our, um, our health bills aren't, aren't that, uh, it's like at 97 versus 100% uh, percent with you, you know, the whole nationwide cost of housing, utilities. It gives you an idea. And transportation, um, we're not really big with um, uh, concerning as far as cars and stuff like that. We have a lot of trucks and a lot of SUVs in San Antonio. We like everything big in Texas. So. Um, you'll see a lot of trucks and SUVs in San Antonio. Um, we do have the city bus, um, but um, people do use it. Uh, those are the people that, um, you know, are the, the lower end workers that use the, the you know, the city bus. Uh, we don't have a train or anything like that, but m the majority of the people that live in San Antonio have a car. That's, that's how they get around is their car. Um, we love our cars. <laughs> and then um, we have a very good climate. So it's very safe to buy property in San Antonio because we don't get um, hit with a lot of uh, disastrous uh, situations. Um, I know Houston was a big hit in Houston with that uh, flooding, but that, that was due to the hurricane. And we're so far inland that any type of hurricanes that happen, by the time it hits us, it's not a hurricane because we're so far inland. We'll just get the rains. Um, the worst thing that we'll get every now and then is a hell storm every now and then. And that really isn't too much of a problem because everybody that has homeowner's insurance gets a new roof if the roof is damaged. So we were hit back in 2015 with the big hell storm. A lot of people got brand new roofs back then. Uh, so that was a good plus. But that's like the worst of it. We hardly get that much rain. Um, during the summer months, it does get very hot. Uh, you know, it's like a hundred degrees, 
101, 102 in July, and in August, we could get up to 105. Um, right now, we're at the, like 99, 98 degrees. But at night, it cools down, thank God. But yeah, in, in the, the middle of the day, it's pretty hot. So everybody has to have their AC working in their cars because you cannot drive without it. Um, we do have a lot of sunny days. So it was very bright and sunny today, very hot, but it, it's beautiful outside today. So we, we don't get, get that much gloomy weather. Uh, the times that we get like that Seattle gloomy weather will probably be in the winter time. Um, even then, sometimes in winter time, it feels like it's spring because it's just weird how the weather works here, but it doesn't get too cold. We don't get that many freezes, very rare. We never hardly ever get any snow. The last time it truly snowed was back in 1985, which was 13 inches. I was in fourth grade. I was able to build a snowman outside, I remember. But we ha we never got like a big uh, snowstorm since then. So we're waiting for our next snow, but uh, you know, we haven't got any yet. So <laughs> um, let me go to the next slide here. Now this talks about, uh, you know, home values, average prices, and it goes back into, you know, from 2014, throughout the years, 2015, 2016, and then the most recent, what we'll look at is uh, last year, February 2017, uh, the actual, the uh, average sell price is actually getting closer to 250. Right there, it shows 242,622. It's actually closer to 250,000 now. It's getting very hard for me to find good properties in good areas under 200,000. But I do find them. I do find them. And when I find them, they don't last that long. So I, I'm going to present some today. But if you can, even with Class A properties that are 200000 up to two fifty, they still cash flow very, very well. Uh, so we'll check those out soon. And that just, uh, you know, gives you, uh, again, just some year-to-year -year job growth, 1.7% uh, there on the bottom of the slide there. The population is actually closer to 0.5 million now, uh, but that's just a, you know another you know statistics for you there. And uh, Forbes, we were featured on Forbes magazine uh, earlier this year. So San Antonio was number 12, the best cities to invest in. Um, you know, so back in in February, the average home price was 232,000. Now it's uh, like I said, it's closer to 250. Uh, our population growth has been growing. We're at 6.5 percent three-year population growth. Two-year job growth at 4.6 percent. I'm telling you, a lot of companies are leaving uh, other states because it's so expensive for them to um, uh, operate their business and all the you know the taxes and stuff that they actually are relocating to San Antonio and different parts of Texas. Uh, but we're, we're getting a lot of businesses uh, relocating here because it's more affordable for them to run their business. And a lot of, uh, we get a lot of people that move here from other, uh, you know, states because they get transferred from work here or they find new jobs to come here because the cost of living is so much better here. Um, and, you know, they, they have, there's a lot of good schools in San Antonio, our infrastructure, our roads a lot of our tax dollars goes to the schools and the roads. So where you pay the higher taxes, of course, you're going to have the better areas. It's not the same all over San Antonio. There's different parts that I don't advise to buy in, but the good parts, you know, there's still very, very affordable homes in good areas. And you can see how nice the areas are, how good the schools are and all the, the shopping, the entertainment all around there. Um, but that's just a, you know, just a little thing there for you, but the three-year price uh, price growth forecast, 20%. That's that's good. I mean, we're 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 a good city. So if you want to get in now at a good city, San Antonio is the right city to invest in now. So this gives you a good chart going back in time, all the way back to 1992, what the homes averaged at, what they were averaging. At. So back in 92, the average cost of a home was like around $75,000. So, and this is like a normal middle class house. Like I'm talking three bedroom, a two bath, average square foot around 1,800 square feet to 2,000 square foot in a nice neighborhood, maybe with a community pool, with a good school, a class B, nice house. 
that's what back in 1992 you get for 75,000. That same house now, it's going to be worth 250, close to 250, 250,000, what was bought for 75,000 back in 92. So if you look at the history, the average um, Class B house right now is around 175,000 to 200,000. That's, that's the price point I like to stay at um, because that's what I see the best cash flow and you get good returns. Uh, but if you look at the history back in 2029 or yeah, 2009 and 2010, uh, we, we were hardly affected at all by the, the mortgage crash that, that, you know, when like other parts of the, you know, states like California and Florida and Vegas, they were hit really hard during that time with the, during the mortgage, um, housing market recession, uh, San Antonio hardly affected. Look how, how much very, you know, merely made a dent. If anything, if, if anybody um, had rental properties in San Antonio back then, we were on a shortage of rental properties to rent out. Everybody was looking to rent. So, you know, that was a good time to rent. <laughs> you know, it's still a good time now, but I'm just saying if that were to ever happen again, which I doubt it would, it, it would not be like affected in San Antonio. And then this shows the property classes, just like I explained earlier, luxury, A, class B, class B, and class D. The majority of the properties I sell are going to be in the class B, and then uh, then class A would be the second. Uh, both are great. It's just the price point you're looking at. And then again, that gives you a, a picture of our market data report that you can actually uh, click on, um, in, on our website. You can download it, and it's always updated with the most recent information. So it's a wealth of knowledge if you want information about San Antonio. So I'll leave it over to Scott here to talk about our awesome lender. So Thanks, ahead. Christina. Um, yeah, I'll jump into this in one sec. Can you actually go back to that appreciation chart two slides back? I just wanted to mention something actually on that. Oh, sure. So sure. Marshall Reddick Real Estate has studied dozens and dozens of markets uh, across the country. In fact, on our website, on the Learn page, if you go to Learn on our website and then click on Calculators, you can see this exact uh, study done over about 30 different markets in the country, and it's in, it's fascinating to see um, the appreciation trend over the last 25 years in so many different markets across the country. Um, like I mentioned uh, many times, I'm I'm in I'm a Californian, you know, live in Orange County um, my whole life, and what we saw in the crash of the market in 2008 here was just a massive downturn. Same thing with areas like Phoenix, Arizona, Las Vegas, Florida. <clears throat> in fact, most places in the country saw a major downturn during the recession from 2008 until about 2010, 11, 12. Now, the anomaly here is Texas. San Antonio and Austin, Texas um, were some of the only markets in the entire country that didn't see a downturn. And if you look at the chart on the right, if you can see there, 2008, the decrease, and this is at the, at, at really the, the crash of the market, prices went down not even 1%. And then the next year, 2009, which, you know, starting to come closer to the bottom of the market, prices went down about 2%. And that is, that is a fraction of the downturn of what we saw in 90% of the United States. And I, I challenge you guys to go on our website and look this up. And you look, can look at, like I said, dozens and dozens of markets in the country. San Antonio is like is like the poster child for a recession resistant market. And of course the question is why? Why didn't San Antonio drop significantly like like everywhere else? And I think it's it's the economic structure, um, the business friendly climate, the demand for jobs. And if you look at San Antonio, it's it's really not a speculated market. You know, in the coastal cities. People buy for the emotion, for the attraction of, of, of living on the coast. Same thing with Vegas. You know, people buy in Vegas for emotional reasons. They just want to be in Vegas or own a property in Vegas because it's Vegas. But, but nobody really, um, you know, speculates on the San Antonio market. It's always been a very stable, steady market. And also, you can see on the right that there's never been a year where they've seen a double-digit increase in prices. And I'm sure you know the expression, what goes up must come down. 
And if you look at markets like California and Florida and, and Phoenix and Vegas, 2004 all the way to 2008 had double digit increases, 10%, 15%. Even in California, that's what we've been seeing over the last few years is double digit increases, which really sets the stage for a potential bubble. Um, I think it's because of these steady increases of five, six, seven percent in, in, in value every year. It's a very predictable market. And if you want to talk about a safe market to invest in, and if what you're looking is, is for is, is a low risk, safe and mark market, I don't think you can find many places besides San Antonio that is going to have the stability and the predictability uh, of values over time. So I just I really wanted to touch on that because that's one of the things that makes San Antonio, um, you know, such a safe market to invest in. And then we'll go back to um, the financing slide. So I just want to touch briefly on financing for a minute. Um, we have, and we meaning Marshall Reddick, you know, we have tried working with so many different mortgage lenders over the years. We worked with big banks like Bank of America and U.S. Bank. We've worked with dozens of direct lenders that you know specialize in, in mortgages and home loans. And for the last 13 years, we have found that um, the best service, best pricing is AmeriFirst Financial. AmeriFirst Financial is a direct lender. Um, they have in-house processing, in-house underwriting, a very, very streamlined process. And what's different about working with a company like AmeriFirst versus like a, a large retail bank like, like Wells Fargo or, or um, B of A is that you're working with, with really the same core group of people throughout the entire process. The lender, uh, the loan officer, the underwriter, the processor, all working on the same team, all people that work in the same office in a very, very streamlined process. And if, um, on the next slide, if you haven't met him already, chances are you'll probably see him at an event or, or hear him on a webinar. Reed Hazard is the branch manager of AmeriFirst Financial. Now he's built his company around the business that he's gotten from Marshall Reddit clients over years and years and years. He's very familiar with not only um, local markets of California, but also out of state markets. And you can see there on the very bottom, they're licensed in all of the states that Marshall Reddick operates in. California, Arizona, Texas, Florida, Indiana, Tennessee, Kentucky. These are all markets that Marshall Reddick operates in, which makes it uh, very convenient for investors who are looking at purchasing multiple properties in various markets. You can work with one team, whether you're buying in any of these states. Um, Reed Hazard is, is not only a, a, a mortgage lender, he's also a real estate investor, started at a very young age and has worked with over a thousand Marshall Reddit clients. So very, very, very knowledgeable on investment financing. He's worked with all different types of borrowers, you know, borrowers who are buying their first property all the way up to their 10th property. Every scenario possible, his, his team is extremely knowledgeable um, on the investment process and, and the pre-approval process. They're very hands-on. Um, and I've just found their customer service is just way beyond what you can find at any retail bank or um, any other mortgage lender. One of the benefits uh, among many of working with AmeriFirst is that they provide a free appraisal credit for Marshall Reddick clients. So if you're a Marshall Reddick client and you work with Christina or one of the Marshall Reddick realtors, uh, they'll pay for your appraisal up to $450 upon close of escrow. So it's a nice incentive um, that they provide to Marsh Reddit clients. Of course, that's not the main reason to work with them, but just a nice additional little incentive that um, they have decided to cover for Marsh Reddit clients. Now, if you're shopping for loans, we always encourage you to check with multiple lenders to find the best rates and, and pricing possible. If you're working with an online lender, a retail bank, and you find an interest rate, Reed and his team will go above and beyond to try and match or beat that rate or that, that pricing that you're finding. Um, and you'll find with their, their customer service and knowledge of the process, um, really I think is the most important, right? I mean, buying a house is one of the largest investments that any of us will ever make. We wanna work with reliable, dependable, knowledgeable people. So I think you know, that, that alone stands out among any, of, any other lenders that we've ever worked with. Um, Reed, finances probably about five or more properties in San Antonio every month. 
um, among our other markets. So he's worked with Christina across probably, you know, close to 100 transactions now. Very familiar with the market. That's something that you're not going to find with most mortgage lenders. So I put uh, Reed's <clears throat> contact information on here. You can, you can call his cell phone. You can send him an email. <clears throat> if you're currently looking at pre-qualifying for a loan, we highly encourage you to contact Reed. <clears throat> He's uh, made himself available to respond to anybody on this webinar. Um, if you do send him an email, let him know that you're on the San Antonio webinar and that you are looking for uh, rates or needing help to get pre-approved for a loan. He'll take the time to answer all of your questions in detail and help you through that, that, that financing process. Back to you, Christina. Thanks, Thanks Scott. So I'm gonna go over now the fun part. <laughs> no, my favorite part. It's the hand-picked selected properties that I actually selected. I selected two single family homes and then uh, one duplex and one fourplex. All of them are in good areas. Um, you know, they're in really, really good areas and they're really great pop properties. So this is the first one. It's on Colt Chase. It is um, a single family home. Um, this is located in a neighborhood called Wild Horse, uh, Wild Horse Vista, located in the Northwest part of San Antonio that has been a huge booming area one of the busiest areas actually for people looking to rent aside from medical center uh, but this is a uh, really close to La Quintera shopping center um, really really good schools um, lots of places to eat and entertainment around this area um, this is a hundred and eighty nine thousand dollar home um, it's priced below two hundred thousand which is in this neighborhood, a lot of the homes are over 200,000. Because this neighborhood has a lot of amenities, um, it has a nice size pool, a neighborhood pool with a little kids splash deck area. It's got a playground area, picnic areas, jogging trails. Um, it's really, really nice neighborhood. Uh, it is a class A, it's a class A neighborhood. So there's a lot of class A properties in this neighborhood. But this is one that's particularly priced at only $189,000. Um, and let me see here. This is uh, the rent is at 1595 So I could, that's with the rent. And I already pulled comparables in this neighborhood to see what, what the other comparable homes are renting out for. And this is a four bedroom. So this stands out compared to the other single family homes that are only a three bedroom because this one's a four bedroom. And four bedrooms are very, very high demand because they're harder to find. Uh, so they do lease out a lot faster. Um, there's two baths. There's a half restroom downstairs. Um, this has a nice size game room too. Game rooms are very popular for families that have older kids, like teenagers and stuff, because they want to watch their TV and play with their games and have their own couch in their own living room. So that's what I've noticed, you know, with the feedback with showing game rooms are popular uh, for that. Uh, and it's also extra space, you know, so it's a very nice home. There's not, there's, there's not any carpet anywhere, actually, that this has ceramic tile and that laminate wood flooring all throughout the home. Nice appliances. It's very, very nice contemporary home. I make sure to find properties that aren't too old. Make sure they were built from 2000 year on up. Uh, this one was built in 2006. And we consider it a class B property because it's below 200,000. However, it's located in the class A neighborhood. So this, these type of properties usually don't sit on the market that long. I give it about another week and it'll probably be under contract. So if you're interested, definitely reach out to me. I can definitely help answer any questions about this property. But the cash flow is really good. So after all your monthly expenses, so on the right side of this uh, slide, you're gonna see they're already your monthly expenses calculated for you. So we got a mortgage payment already off the regular rate of five and a quarter. We got that mortgage payment there. We got the monthly taxes, uh, the insurance. Uh, we already put the what the monthly management fee would be. Uh, for the property management, and we only charge that monthly management fee once it's occupied. We don't charge it when it's vacant. 
only when it's occupied. Uh, we only make money when you make money. So keep that in mind. Uh, the monthly HOA fee, and uh, there's no, the, the tenant pays for their own utilities. They pay for their own electric bill, their own water. So you don't have to worry about that. They do pay for their own landscaping. And most of our tenants do it themselves. They have a lawnmower. You know, that's why they want to live in homes and not apartments, because so they can have the yard, the backyard, the driveway. So they, you see them out there all the time, you know, mowing the lawn, edging it, you know, so their kids can play on and, and they can barbecue on and stuff like that. So they do maintain their own yards. Um, and that's also on their lease as well. Uh, we want to make sure they, they maintain it to HOA standards. Uh, but um, you'll see your monthly income after all expenses. We get the rent and we take out all the monthly expenses. This house, it actually gives you over 300 a month cash flow, which is pretty good because most people that buy single family homes, you know, just equal out. They just wash out. You know, it's, they hardly make a huge cash flow up front. Um, but every year, every year, the, the rent increases, usually by $50. Even if the tenant renews, it's usually a small increase, not a big one. So it's usually just $50. So a year from now, this will be uh, like 16, close to like 1645 uh, a month, you know, for rent. So every year, you're going to see your cash flow increase and increase. Um, usually it takes three or four years for someone to get two to 300 a month cash flow for a single family home. This property, you're already getting that right away. So that's really good. And then, of course, after you hold on to it for five or 10 years, you're going to have that appreciation and that equity grow like really good. And then a lot higher rent at that time. So, you know, your cash flow will keep increasing higher than that each year. Keep that in mind. And along with the appreciation and equity you're going to get. It's a great, great home to, to invest in. So let me go to the next slide. Um, here's another property. It's on, on 11034 Arabian Palm. And this is also in the neighboring neighborhood. Uh, this diag it's, it's like it's right next to this neighborhood. And it's also called Wild Horse, but it's located in the northwest side, very, very high demand area. I'm telling you, this area, the properties go pretty fast. Now, this is a Class A property. It's $200,000. Uh, it's a one-story, very nicely built home. It's 50, it's over 1,500 square feet. It is a three-bedroom. Um, and then I put here the projected rent is that, because I did, again, cool comparables. So this is what the current rent would be, would be $1,550 a month. And then after all your monthly expenses, uh, your monthly cash flow is at 226 a month. Um, and, and it is great, great property. It's got, like I said, it's got a lot of amenities here. You got your community pool, your kids flash egg, jogging trails, basketball court, picnic areas. This just helps tenants stay longer term. When you have a home that has a lot of amenities because their family gets used to those amenities. They get used to the school. They make friends with the neighbors and their kids make friends with theirs with their kids so you have longer term tenants that are looking in these areas this is also a really great property uh to invest in you're you're definitely it was built in 2006 you'll definitely get the appreciation over the years as well as your your cash flow increasing every year and here's a duplex this is a two-unit duplex located on the northeast side of san antonio now the northeast side um is close to two military bases. It's close to an Air Force base and an Army base. So we get a lot of military families looking in this area. It has really good schools surrounding there as well. And this duplex is only $270,000. It was, um, it, it's uh, right now it has, uh, you know, tenants occupying it. So you won't have to worry about vacancy after closing because it's tenant occupied already. So I would get the lease agreement during your contingency period while you're in contract so you could see the lease agreements, the true rent, what they actually are paying in the rent and everything like that. So that amount, the um, gross rent, that's for both units combined. So if you just divide that in half, you'll know that's how much each unit pays. And then after all the monthly expenses, your cash flow is close, almost at 650 a month. 
It's $645 a month for your monthly cash flow. Multi-family do cash flow more, of course, than single family. Um, so, and then you have the, you know, the, the two units that they're both kind of occupied already. Um, and the good thing is with this, because some multifamilies don't have a separate meter, you have to have the, you know, you have to pay separate on your own for the water meter and stuff. This is a good uh, benefit for the duplex. The electric and the water and the gas are all metered separately. So tenant pays for their own utilities. They get to set up their electric bill under their own name, the water bill, same thing under their own name. So all meters, the both meters are separate meters, which is great. Um, great location. It's nice, very nice curb appeal. It's, it's a nice area where it's at. Really good schools. Um, this is really definitely going to appreciate over the years and you've got definitely good cash flow. And the, the, the one car garages that are attached, they do have garage door openers in both. And then the backyards are private fenced in yards. So they're not sharing a yard. They're, they're fenced in separately, which people like, you know, to have a separate, you know, for their own backyard. So it's a really nice duplex. Um, so that's a really good property for only 270,000. And then here's the fourplex. So this is located in the medical center, which is a very high demand area in San Antonio. It's probably the main uh, highest demand areas in the whole city is the medical center because it's such a busy area with so many businesses around. Um, and right here, it shows the left side. So the listing agent just took a picture of the left side, but it's actually a fourplex. So on the right side are the other two garages um, that you'll, you'll be able to see um you know but the, it, it is on the website as well you'll be able to see all the pictures on the website um so this is priced at five hundred and seventy thousand. it is a fourplex so there's four units okay so uh you know each unit um you know has of course the tenants they pay their own electric bill as well so these are separately metered as well um that's another good thing and then after um all the you know monthly expenses because together for all four units combined the rents come out to four thousand seven hundred and ten a month that's combining all four okay units so after all expenses your cash flow is over a thousand it's over a thousand a month and you know four flexes they cash flow very well so it's at almost a thousand fifty a month cash flow um and the, these are th uh, three bedroom two and a half bath in each unit, okay? Three bedrooms, two and a half bath. There's a half restroom downstairs, um, and there's two, there's the master bathroom upstairs in the master bedroom, and then the regular restroom in between the two other rooms. All the rooms are upstairs, but that makes it a big, the layout is very big. When you walk in, it's long. It's real long. It's a big, um, big layout. It's got a tray ceiling, which is very contemporary looking for the medical center because the medical center, you got a lot of apartments um, that you're competing with, which is good to compete with because, uh, you know, a lot of people pay the same price for rent for an apartment when they could get in a fourplex and have a, a, a driveway, they get a garage attached, they get a private fenced in yard that they may not get with an apartment. So, um, you know, medical center, I'm telling you, there's so many businesses there. It's like a little mini Manhattan, what we call it in San Antonio, but it's not just uh, hospitals and clinics. There's a lot of restaurants, shopping centers, lots of apartments um, all around the medical center. So this, this fourplex is located in a high demand area. It's very rare to see fourplexes for sale that are in the medical center because usually investors don't sell them. If they're selling them, that means that they really need the money or they're divorcing or something's happening where they need access to their those funds. So I'm not sure how long this will be on the market, but if anyone's interested, I'll be happy to, to go over any questions you have. But this is really the one of the best fourplexes on the market right now in San Antonio. And I'll so what are talk about? Talk about. Ahead, Thank you, Christina. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. great job on 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 those properties. Um, and I Thanks. wanted to point out that you know we had a, a red circle around the the monthly income. That's essentially what most people consider cash flow because that's your rent minus all your fixed expenses, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, 
any HO homeowners association fees, property management fees. Um, and then below that, we had variable expenses. And those were just pure estimates of maintenance and vacancy based on the property class. So if you're not really familiar with this, you want to read the Reddit rating ebook so you can understand where those estimates for maintenance and vacancy and, and leasing fees are coming from. Um, but again, you know, this does not include rent increases over time. Uh, we're very, very conservative with the taxes and insurance and interest rates. You might get a lower interest rate. Your insurance, you know, depending on your deductible could be lower. We really try to put the worst case scenario in front of you um, because we can't predict, of course, exactly um, what some of these fees are because for insurance example if you have a 740 mid fico you get a discount on your insurance premium so we don't know exactly what your situation is but what i recommend doing is find these properties on our website go on marshreddick.com click on invest properties and then you'll see that you can actually edit and change the numbers on any of these so if you're quoted an interest rate you can actually plug that rate on the website it's an interactive interface on the website, of course, we're looking at a static, you know, um, screenshot right now. But if you go on marshreddick.com, you're able to play around with the numbers to fit your exact scenario. And then, uh, what I'd like to end with here, uh, the last couple of minutes, and we really appreciate everybody for taking the time uh, with us to go through all this information. I want to touch on property management because, again, that's really the X factor, the make or break factor in owning rental properties. So Marshall Reddick also services the property management in San Antonio and Austin, Texas. Um, Christina said something earlier that really is kind of like the slogan for our property management. We as property managers only make money when our clients make money and we don't make money when our, when our clients and our landlords lose money. So what I mean by that is that we don't charge any fees during vacancy. There's no initial setup or admin fees. Um, our monthly management fee is 7%, which is kind of the average, you know, not the lo lowest, not the highest. Um, our leasing fee is 50% of one month's rent. A leasing fee is a one-time fee to procure a new renter. And that 50% of one month's rent includes our photography, the advertising, all of the showings that we do for, and sometimes we do 10, 15, 20 showings or more. Um, the application process, screening and background checks, uh, the move-in inspection. So on the first day of the lease, we actually do a full walkthrough with the tenant, taking pictures and notes, and we provide a detailed report that we call a move-in inspection to the owner. All of that is covered in the leasing fee. We don't charge any additional marketing or advertising fees. Um, one thing that sets us apart is that we don't make any money from maintenance or repairs. Some property managers charge an upcharge of 10 or 15% on top of the work that the contractors do just to coordinate the maintenance. And we don't have that whatsoever. Uh, we work with third party, independent, licensed contractors. So these are the, the experts, the electricians, plumbers, roofers, uh, handymen, uh, HVAC techs. So they're all, we call them our service vendors, but they're not on our payroll. They don't work for Marshall Reddick. They're licensed third-party contractors. And we also don't require our landlords to have to go through our preferred vendors. Uh, we don't have any cancellation fees or penalties. If we have a landlord that says, you know, I'd like to end my management agreement, no cancellation fees or penalties at all. So we're a very, very open, flexible property management company. And I think the best part about all this is that uh, like Christine said, you're, you'd work with her during that initial process of uh, discovery and questions and analyzing and figuring out what properties make sense and then helping you get pre-approved for financing and helping you through the offer stage. So if you see a property that, that you want to make an offer on, Christina will coach you through that process. And then getting the property, uh, the offer accepted and working through the escrow process, her job doesn't stop after the property closes escrow. She'll be connecting you to our property manager who works in the same office as Christina. And what's so great about working with the same team is we're accountable for the properties that we recommend. And if we say, you know, this is a good property, um, you know, we don't just sell it. Most realtors are only there to sell you the property and then they're gone. Um, we're there throughout the entire process of leasing, 
management, long-term, same team. It keeps us accountable to help you find the properties that we know will be able to rent out to good quality renters. And that's what also sets Christina apart is that 90% of realtors in any market are not really familiar with, with renting and the rental markets and tenants and, and, and uh, rentability of properties and, and what renters are looking for and what attracts a good renter. Most, most, most realtors specialize in helping people buy their primary residence. So, um, you know, working with an agent like Christina, you'll find very, very differently her intimate knowledge of these neighborhoods and uh, what they can command for rent and the types of renters that they attract and um, how to make your home presentable and attract a good quality tenant. You know, should you provide a fridge and should you provide washer dryer? These are all things that um, the team is, is there to help you with. I could certainly talk more about property management, but I'll just leave it at that for now. Um, I wanted to end with um, the last slide, which is um, an overview of what our um, process looks like. In, and uh, so what you see here, and Christina, if you, could, if you could hit the next arrow key about four more times. So this is actually our process that we take each investor through. We'll help you define why you're investing in real estate. And we'll help you define when is and, and how to invest in real estate you know what options are available to you you know should we go with conventional financing are you using a retirement account to buy real estate um do you do you own uh do you have a trust and are you looking to uh, you know build properties inside of a trust are you setting up an llc or are you using um private financing and these are all many different strategies and options that most realtors are not familiar with. And, and again, you know, we specialize in investment real estate. So we will help you figure out which options make sense for you. And if you're looking to maybe pull equity out of your primary, you know, these are all options that we'll go over with you in detail. Um, we'll help you figure out when is the best time um, in terms of like your time frame and when you're ready. You know, we work at your pace, not ours. We'll help you set your criteria um, with property types, single family, multifamily, property classes, A, B, or C. So we'll go through all of that with you and help you determine exactly which properties make sense for you. What parts of San Antonio are going to, um, are going to accomplish the, um, you know, where can we find properties that, that meet your criteria and meet your property class? And Christina talked about a lot of different parts of San Antonio. Um, you know, we only touched on it really briefly, but she can help you figure out exactly what neighborhoods and what areas of San Antonio fit exactly your goals and, and, and what you're looking to accomplish. And then, of course, having that team. So introducing you to all the key players um, that we discussed tonight, our leasing agents, our property managers, our contractors, all people who work under the Marshall Reddick umbrella who are very familiar with our clients. This is a very well-oiled machine very streamlined process and we're very excited to work with um with you folks on the uh, presentation tonight so the last slide is uh christina's contact info and it says there at the top send christina an email to schedule a call with her to go over next steps and her email address is at the very very bottom cdorie at marshallreddick.com and we've also have her cell phone there so this is your opportunity now to take action reach out to christina Set up a call and ask as many or as little questions as you want, and she'll take the time to go over everything with you in detail. You know, we're very hands-on. I think customer service is something that um, Christina and, and the team here highly excels in because we know that this can be an intimidating process for many people, especially those that are just getting started and buying their first property. We've all been there. I own investment property. Christina owns investment property. So we were in your shoes at once. We know exactly you know, the butterflies and the questions and the concerns um, because we've worked with thousands of investors and, you know, we all started there at once too. So, Christina, um, I'll leave it up to you if you want to say any final words or anything that, that we missed tonight. Yeah, I'm just, I, I'm excited to be working with any of you that are interested. I, I know the market very well. Uh, I'm the expert, you know, I can, um, you know, based on your criteria, what you're looking for, your time frame, your price range, I, I'll make sure to stay within that. I make your search easy. You know, some people just go through Zillow and they don't know what they're looking at. I can target specific areas and send you property 
uh, to make your search a lot easier. It doesn't have to be stressful. It should be very exciting and I can make that happen. Uh, again, I own my own investment property and it's the best thing I've ever done. I mean, I bought my investment property 10 years ago. Uh, I was not even cash flowing. I was just breaking even. Now I'm cash flowing over 500 a month. And now I have $80,000 in equity and I'm not going to sell it until another eight more years until my daughter is ready for college. And that's going to pay for all of her college funds. So, I mean, that's just, that's my investment goal. I know everybody has different goals, whether it's for your kids, your own retirement, extra income, whatever, um, I can make it happen for you. All right. Well, we want to thank everybody for joining us on the webinar and, and, and providing your time. And there were some really good questions that just came in. And um, Christina and the team here will be able to reach out to some of you that ask questions so we can go over this in detail. Um, I also encourage you, if you haven't yet, to send Christina an email to set up a phone call. So again, thank you guys so much. We hope that you found this presentation helpful. Um, obviously, there's only so much we can cover in an hour. And uh, we do look forward to speaking to each of you uh, individually. So thank you so much and happy investing, everybody. Good night. Thanks. Good night.